This video is a sample solution for the rectangle task. This task is to translate this class named rectangle from Python into Java. So the very first thing I'm going to do is declare a class named rectangle. So let's have brace, braces for this class and then the body of the class goes between these braces. So there's a few things to get right before we start translating the methods. Um, we need to declare the fields of the rectangle class and we need to declare this constructor. And we can see in Python the constructor takes two parameters, p1 and p2, as well as the self, which we don't need in Java. And we're going to assign these parameters, p1 and p2, to the fields named p1 and p2. Now in Python I don't know what type of thing p1 or p2 is until I make some deductions from the code that I see. So I can see in the width method we're using p2.x and p1.x. Similarly, in the height method, we have p2.y, p1.y. And so whatever p1 and p2 are, they must have an x field and a y field. And the type of thing that has an x field and a y field in this project is named vector. That's a vector class we wrote in the previous example. So p1 must be a vector. So we must declare a, ve a field named p1 of type vector. And then p2, again, is a field of type vector. We must declare those in the body of the class. Then we can translate the constructor because we're writing in Java. The constructor has the same name as the class, which is rectangle. So I'm going to write the brackets and the braces first. This constructor takes a parameter p1 and a parameter p2. Those must be vectors because we're assigning them to the fields. So this will be vector p1, vector p2 with a comma between. And what this constructor does is assign the field this.p1 equals p1, this.p2 equals p2. That's as opposed to the self parameter in Python. We use this in Java to refer to the current object. Okay, we're ready to move on to the next method, which is the width method in the Python class. The width method here takes self as a parameter, which we don't need in Java. So therefore our Java method takes no parameters at all. And to follow Java's naming conventions, we should name this method getWidth. So this method getWidth is going to return a double because it's the x minus the x for the two vectors we've got. And the x component of a vector is a double, so double minus a double must be a double. So we can declare that this method returns a double and it's named getWidth and it has no parameters. The body of this method is simple. We're going to subtract p2's x minus p1's x. But we should use the get x methods to get those x fields rather than accessing the fields directly. So let's write return p2.getx minus p1.getx. And if we click compile here, we can see that there's no syntax errors, so this is fine. I could write this.p2 and this.p1. That would be equivalent. In this case, there is no other variable named p2. There's no other variable named p1. So it's unambiguous for me to just write p2 rather than this.p2. Let's translate the height method. And similarly, this returns a double because the y fields are of type double. A double minus a double is a double. So this height method returns a double. And its name should be get height. And this, again, takes no parameters because we don't need the self in Java. Similarly, this is just going to return p2.gety minus p1.gety. So that's the height method translated into Java. We want the area method. In Python, we can see that this method takes no more parameters after self. So the Java version of this method will take no parameters. And this method calls the width and height methods, multiplies them together, and returns the result. So because width returns a double, height returns a double, a double times a double will be a double, so we should declare this method as returning a double. And the name should be get area with a capital A. No parameters. I need braces for the body of the method. And all we're going to do is return the product of the width and the height. So return width, or this is called get width in Java, and then times get height. So again, I don't need to say this dot get width um, because I'm writing a method on this class. So by default, it will find the other method in the same class. Whereas in Python, I would need self dot width. In Java, I can just write the name of the method here. 
So if you did write this dot get width, that's fine as well. I think it's just a bit shorter and clearer to avoid writing this where we don't need to. Let's get the center method translated as well. This method here, we need to think about the types again. We can see that this method in Python is going to call the add method on P1, or P1 is a vector, and the add method on the vector class returns a vector. So this add method is going to result in a vector, and then we're calling the scale method on that vector. And we remember that this scale method on the vector class also returns a vector. So finally, this method returns a vector. So we should declare its return type is vector. In Java, we should call this method getCenter, and this method takes no parameters. And all we're going to do is directly translate this into Java. Rather than writing self, I can write this, or I don't need to write it. So I can say return p1.add p2.scale 0.5. And as long as I get my brackets and my dots in the right place, and I need a semicolon at the end of this, then this is fine. What's actually happening here is that the we're calling dot add on the p1 vector. That returns a vector, and then we're directly calling the scale method on the vector that's returned. So that's what this code actually does. Then finally, we have this method named contains. So this contains method, other than self, takes a parameter named point. So again, the first thing we want to get right is the types. We need to know what type of thing point is, and we need to know what type of thing this method returns. Well, how are we using point? On lines 23 and 24, we have point.x, point.y. So therefore, point must be a vector because it has an x and a y field. And we can see that this method is doing some logical comparisons. We have p1x is less than point.x. We have point.x is less than p2.x, and similarly for y's, and then there's this logical and between them. So this method must return a boolean, because we're doing some comparisons and then combining those conditions together, this returns a true or a false, so that's of type boolean. So the method returns a boolean, and this method should be called contains. Uh, not get contains here, the word contains is already a verb, so it makes sense to use that as the name of a method. Let's write our brackets and our braces. This method should take a parameter, which is the point, and we've already said that point must be a vector. And to dr directly translate this method from Python into Java, we don't need to write any if-else here. We can do exactly the same as the Python code does, which is just directly return the result of this comparison. So all of this logical condition gives me a true or a false, it gives me a boolean, so we can return that boolean directly. There is one difference in syntax here, which is that in Python, I can do two comparisons at once. So what's actually happening here is we're checking is p1.x less than point.x, and we're also checking is point.x less than p2.x. We can write a shorthand version of that in Python, but there is no such shorthand version of this in Java. So I do have to write all four of these comparisons, this one, this one, this one, and this one. That's four comparisons I need to write separately in Java. Um, fortunately, I can split this across multiple lines, so it will make the code a bit easier to read. So we're going to return the result of this comparison. The first one is going to be p1.x, but we should write getx to call the getx method. So this is going to be p1.getx, and this should be less than or equal to point.x, or point.getx. So that's the first comparison. If I press enter here, we can continue on the next line, and I'll press tab to continue this uh, indented so we can see it's a continued expression. Then this should be joined with a logical AND, that's the ampersand, ampersand operator in Java. We want to do the next comparison, which is point.x is less than or equal to p2.x. We should use the getx method again, so point.getx is less than or equal to p2.getx. And I could write this.p1, this.p2, but it's unambiguous if I don't use this dot because there is no other variable named p1 or p2 in this method. There's two more comparisons to do. We need a logical and again, so that's ampersand ampersand. I need p1.y is less than or equal to point.y, so that's going to be p1.gety is less than or equal to point.gety. And then finally and point.y is less than 
or equal to p2.y, so point.gety is less than or equal to p2.gety. And then I can have a semicolon at the end of this. So a difference between Python and Java here to split an expression across multiple lines in Python, it must be inside brackets. Otherwise, Python would think that this new line was the end of the statement that we were writing. In Java, we don't use new lines to indicate the end of a statement. A semicolon is what says that this is the end of the statement. So statements, instead of being on separate lines, just must be separated by semicolons. Therefore, we can have a new line wherever we want. It doesn't affect what the code does. So in this method, we've used new lines just to neaten the code up and make it easier to read. So I didn't have one long expression across four lines. Um, but it's not necessary to have brackets around this expression. So generally, where you don't need brackets, it's best not to write them. This is a complete solution to the rectangle task. In the next video, we'll look at the circle class.